Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, crap. <laughs> so I, think, I think the way we ended that last show, last uh, segment and went to the break, you might need a little, little cleanup on your metaphors. Yeah. Three yards in cloud of dust is not like a positive thing. Usually that's just like this guy's just like a... Like just a dust cloud just r- runs in three. There's nothing else you can expect. Just on third and two, I want. I need three <laughs> yards in a cloud of dust. Sure, that's not what the metaphor was made for, though. Well, I I can do whatever I want. <laughs> I, it says who? Well, it says gonna, the metaphor makers. I'm gonna Google it. Yeah. All right. You can Google it. It's worth a Google. I, I encourage it. <laughs> so we're gonna go with the other Bama back here. We're gonna go Josh Jacobs. I like Damian Harris. I like his power. I'm not gonna. Ooh, you're not gonna. Uh, He's got power. I'm t- tired of you thinking that I'm hating on him. I'm not hating on him. All right. Three yards in a cloud of dust just wasn't isn't a positive metaphor typically. Uh-huh. Um, let's get into Josh Jacobs. Mm. So we just talked about um, Damien Harris. Damien Harris, uh, who was born. Damien Harris is born two eleven ninety eight. Mm. And I believe, or two eleven ninety seven, and I believe Josh Jacobs, what from what I could find, was born two eleven ninety seven. So mm. same Z's, but a year off. So you got Josh Jacobs over here, just turning twenty one. Uh, so young, young, young pup out there. Uh, doesn't have a ton of miles on him. Nope. Not not that any of the Bama backs really have a ton of mileage on him, but this was his biggest carry year while he was at Alabama. He had one hundred fifty carries this year. Average 5.3, 11 touchdowns, 20 receptions. Average 12.4, a catch uh, with three receiving touchdowns. His previous two years at Alabama in 17 and 16 and 17, um, he had 46 attempts and in eight and 16, he had 85 attempts. So not a ton of volume here. And people are asking why, you know, why, why is this, I, I don't have an answer for you. Well, in, uh, but he pulls his hamstring before the 2017 season starts. Missed the first two games to start that year. Uh, then he had seven carries and two catches uh, before the Arkansas game. In 17, he picked up a minor ankle injury versus Tennessee. And then he said that on social media, he said he played through a broken ankle that he sustained week five of 2017 versus Ole Miss. He played on the bum leg the rest of the year. He had surgery in the offseason in January 2018. All right, so, so there you go. Got some, got some reasoning. There. Yeah. So and and missed pretty much all the off season, um, and and that's there's a good excuse for the low attempt totals. Sure. And the poor per performance. Uh, so this was a guy who's was from Oklahoma originally. Uh, give you a little backstory. Yep. Um, and I saw this on Pro Football Talk uh, during the Super Bowl. They were talking about how. Uh, he was one of the best running backs in Oklahoma, in the state of Oklahoma, and just didn't receive any scholarships, not even from anybody in Oklahoma. Right. So it was like two weeks before uh, all the stuff, signing all the day. signing day stuff, and then Oklahoma finally came with a letter, and he was like, nah. Nah, brah. I'm good. I'm going to go to Alabama. Yeah, they were the first ones to give him an offer, and Saban was like, you know, it's our fault for finding him that late, but we found him, and when the, he was, I listened to something where he was talking about it, and he was like, it, when they watched the tape on him, it, he was like, Seems too good to be true. Like, what's wrong with this kid? Mm-hmm. Why is nobody recruiting him? Why is he? Why yeah. does he look this good? What's wrong? And uh, so, I mean, he plays with his chip on his shoulder. He, he, you know, when you get overlooked and you're that good, yeah, it can really be a good driving force. So I like that. Uh, this is uh, Josh Jacobs to me. He's like the guy that you just met. You don't know him. But you like him? Mm-hmm. Maybe you're not sure why, but you're you're picking up what he's putting down, and, and you start you start looking for ways to like reciprocate the like the likeness. Yeah. All of a sudden, you got a new best friend. You don't even know the guy. Right. Uh. So, like, I I just I I just, off the rip. I like this guy. He's just so he's got a twitchy element to his game. It's it's pretty silky smooth. And it's fun to watch. There's not a ton of it, though. You can't dive yeah. super deep into it. There's probably not less than half the amount of games that you can watch on yeah, Damian that, Harris. That is accurate. He does not have a lot of tape but uh, what to he, watch on YouTube anyway. Right. And But, but I mean, what he put down is just... It's, uh, it's pretty solid. Off um, the chain. 
Well, I just talked about how Damian Harris was a really good all around player. Um, and I think this guy is a, is a, is a very good all around player as well, but has more elite traits. Uh, most of the traits are, are very solid. Um, I think he is, it's, it's balance, balance, balance for me mm-hmm. at, at, with him and footwork. Um, I think he just has a, seems like he has a force field around him. Like he's some sort of a Jedi. It just feels like dudes are just seemingly bouncing all off of him and around him and just falling. Like people will get close to him and then they just seemingly fall down. Yeah. Um, just a violent runner. Um, probably the best pad. Just level. seems like everything he does is kind of, kind of violent and aggressive. Um, but I, he doesn't have, doesn't necessarily rely on being the most aggressive guy on the field. He does have a smooth, fluid movement about his hips that can make you miss in his feet. His hips um, do lie. So yeah, right. He's he's uh, the opposite of Shakira. The opposite of Shakira. Uh, so I think there's I don't have a ton to say about Josh Jacobs because there's not a ton to watch and you know he didn't didn't t- play a ton. Yeah. Uh, but everything I did see, all accounts, he's he's right up there. With the top of any running back in this class, I mean, I got Montgomery firmly planted in front of him, and I don't think very much can change that for me. That's just my personal opinion. I like Montgomery. I've seen it all play out. He's a workhorse. I know he can do everything, um, and I really like him. He's. I don't. Jacobs put isn't, a lot down. Jacobs isn't going to su- supplant. Uh, There's a lot of proof in the in the David yeah. Montgomery pudding. Not going to supplant Montgomery for me, but he's definitely up there at the number two spot right now for just what I. There's just. I think there's a lot of elite traits to his game you'll see at the combine yeah uh what he can do it should be should be pretty interesting when he's a blocker there's examples of him laying wood his pass blocking is is pretty solid i'm gonna call him the best pass protector in this class. yeah well again there's not a lot of tape to watch but he does typically lay some good wood he either takes blocking pride in it. or you, you can see him block up. two guys in yeah. one play um so but you're right he steps up he initiates contact he sustains that contact throughout the block all that all that stuff is diagnoses is, the blitz really well he's right he'll wait and see and diagnose who it's coming and then analyze it and he's got him like he's yeah just, he seems really smart so i and then on top of it you put the receiving ability and it looks to be the real deal he he comes out of the backfield he makes adjustments when necessary to make you know non-typical he catches for a running back and he makes he can make some wide receiver like adjustments oh um, yeah i mean he he breaks off blocking to become an outlet he's re- i mean he's just really smooth in the passing game this very handsy catches obviously ridiculous moves after the catch sets up the screens well he can make a one-handed catch and catches outside of his frame and behind him yeah uh, and he keeps it going in stride you see him make nice adjustments a back shoulder catch um, and I think I saw one one drop that right. I could account for. Yeah, no, normally the first tackler is not bringing this down guy down, whether it was because he he dropped down and ran you over, or he put a foot in the ground and and made like when he even when he plants the plants are kind of powerful looking. Yeah, looks like a horse just kind of right. putting a foot in the ground and just driving back off. So just a lot of uh, he doesn't. He doesn't push up. He pushes the world down. This right. is some Chuck Norris stuff. Is that <laughs> right? Uh, so some some fun stuff to watch there and it'll fun it'll be fun uh to kind of keep an eye on him moving forward oh yeah i'm just enamored man it's a slippery change of direction he's got all the moves a stutter step jump cut one of the most vicious cuts i've ever seen like what he did to the clemson defender was just silly and there's zero effort for him to change directions like that and, and like you said it's compact and fluid he never loses momentum he can get skinny he yeah. can move his shoulders to kind Every, of slip through uh, a tackles. He varies his play speed. Like he might not even think he's that fast at times because he's so methodical. He just when he's navigating through traffic and he'll he'll give you a slow pace to kind of set you up to to give right. you that acceleration and get around you. Um, he's got a really nice jump cut, but he only uses that when necessary. You mentioned the balance. It, he's never close to being off balance. Power to drag defenders and then the pad level to me. Yeah, is just he gets so low at the point of contact that it's it's unfair for these defenders. He's blowing guys up. Right. It's ridiculous. Right. And so you put all that together. I mean, the pad level and the footwork combination mm-hmm. to go with the the willing and the ability to pass protect and the smoothness in the passing right. game. And, it's and just a complete player. Touched on it a little when we were doing some video stuff, but it, you know, much like receivers will hand fight right off on and off press or when they're making a break and doing that kind of stuff. There's uh, a good amount of that with 
with Jacobs when he's going through holes or making cuts and stuff like that. He's using a different hand. Right. To, it's not necessarily just a stiff arm, which he can. Right. And he uses that stiff arm or to just get his hand on like your shoulder pad to give you a little nudge and create some separation, yeah. but it'll also like thwart your hands off of him. Yeah. It's not just a, a stiff arm. It's a th- yeah. a thwart. I don't know how to explain it any natural, differently. Just natural reflexes and instincts to drive away other arms and hands. When we talked about Benny Snell, when we talked about Rodney Anderson, we talked about how when they were going through those tunnels of traffic, they were able to maneuver their body and get shoulders low so you couldn't get a hold of them and, and fend off uh, defenders with hands. And it's something that Josh Jacobs does extremely well. Yeah. One last thing I would add uh, to his game is the kick return ability. Right. Um, he, I think he played on every special team's play, whether that was on offense or defense. I think he was out there making tackles. He talks about taking pride in basically every play he's on because he didn't get a ton of plays because yeah. they're splitting time between three or four really good backs. Yeah. So you got to make it worth it when you get out there. And he's just so explosive and electric in the return game yeah. that I think – I don't know if an NFL team is going to want to throw him out there on kick returns, maybe depending on the situation, but it's just another reason for him to get on the field, and right. I don't think he's going to have any issue getting on the field. I'm pretty sure this guy's probably going to be a first-round pick, if right. I had to guess. Someone's well, going to be enamored enough to you want to not see want him, to miss out on the Josh You want to see Jacobs him get in a place where he can be in a creative offense that can use all of these different talents uh, to the best of their ability. Sure. We haven't seen him be a workhorse, so that's maybe a slight question mark. Yeah. If he's going to be a load carrier, but he certainly uh, seems to be able to he's built enough to seemingly be able to shoulder the load. Almost no running back completely shoulders the load anymore. Right. Um, but, for you know, yeah, I mean, 216, you know, he gained I think he was a, a 204 his freshman year and gained 12 pounds of what looks to be rock hard muscle. I mean, there's and yeah, he looks just, he looks and plays bigger than that weight, too. Similar right. to Harris. I mean, they look and, but 215, 216's perfect weight for me. I'm. Yeah, hundred percent fine with that. I'm okay with that. I mean, as like we said, I I, I think I have him probably firmly planted at 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 two. I think there's a tear break there, and then too. working through to Harris. You know, I, I I don't. I'm having a hard, really hard time placing Harris um, among these guys. I mean, I think I'll put him at three. You're putting Harris at three. Yeah. I, I think I got to go Rodney Anderson. All the you know the medicals obviously aren't clean, but right. I like the athleticism of Rob, Rod. I think Rodney can do pretty much everything that Damian can mostly do. Maybe a little better, uh, more athletic. And in the receiving game, I think he is a better receiver. Better, yeah, I, I like. Uh, hey, hey, like I said, I like Harris's ability out of the backfield. And I, I don't like you said it. I, I don't think he gets enough credit for seems to have a pretty good ability as being a receiver. But I think Rodney Anderson is, is a, on another level. I agree. Of being a receiver. Like if, I've actual he could more so play a receiver position right. where I don't think Damian Damian Harris is nice out of the backfield. But I think that's as far as it goes. But you don't need any more. Right. Than that. I'm not trying to knock. That, Harris. No, no. But, but I just, never saw I'm, him. That's lining how up. much I like Anderson's receiving right. ability. You, know, you don't see Harris lining up out wide or in the slot. Yeah. You do see uh, Anderson going right. out there. Now, in a couple of weeks when they go through the combine, and if Harris is, or if uh, Montgomery's, sorry, geez. Anderson? If Rodney Anderson's medicals come back clean and that ACL tear was clean and he's made a pretty good recovery and he's on track and there's no medical concerns because that's really just our only real concern we we broke down rodney already and we we didn't want to call him injury prone it was kind of fluky the stuff that happened and then he tore his acl on top of that i mean what are you gonna do plenty of people if rodney was healthy and played i think i would have him at at two yeah, I mean, if he put if he if he did that over if he took that eight game span and exp- and and crossed it over a couple of years, then you could give him the edge to Jacobs based on the amount of work that he that he did. But he only had those eight games, and there is that medical question. So for now, I, I'll take both those Bama backs over him. But but I could see him moving into the three spot mm-hmm. for me. But right now, if you if you put me up against the wall right now, I would take Harris. I guess is, yeah is where I'm at. So. Still early in this process, yeah. but um, we'll get it all sorted out at some point. Yeah, so go uh, go. It's fun over. right now shuffling these guys around. I'm not 100 percent sure where I have Harris at this second, but yeah, pro- probably at four. Yeah, going Rodney at three. Yeah, that's fair. I can't. The medicals could shift me around, but as for pure talent, I like Rodney. The medicals could shift me around too. We're just taking a different yeah. uh, approach to begin with, so that, that's fine. 
no one's drafting right now anyway. I mean, you shouldn't be. You're, you're doing a mock draft. That's all well and good. But yeah. I, I don't think rookies are in that, right? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. I haven't, I haven't gotten there I haven't yet. seen that yet. All right. Well, that should uh, wrap up today's show here. We came on the mics here on the Saturday to give you a little breakdown. This it's Friday. Is, uh, well, yeah, it's almost Saturday. Uh, <laughs> we'll uh, go check out the videos if you haven't. Uh, they're, they're on the posts page. Did one for Harris. Did one for Jacobs. Trying to dial that in. We've been talking about it. Wanting to do it for a while. Finally got on, on there and did it. Uh, it's going to be a work in progress. Yep. We're figuring it out. Give us your feedback. And uh, Until then, we'll catch you next time. See ya.